three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Welcome to Roots of Reality Experiences. I'm your host, Ben Bauman, and today I'm going to be talking about the history of origin stories. So as a species, at some point in all of our lives, we contemplate the biggest questions the universe has to offer. Who are we? Where do we come from? And why are we here? These questions are kind of like a rite of passage for being a human being because we are these creatures that are intelligent enough to wonder and contemplate our own existence. And this is something that we have done for thousands and thousands of years. And before the age of science, with little deep understanding of the intricacies of our universe, ancient civilizations would create origin stories to try to make sense of their own existence. Thus, when it comes to ancient origin stories, many follow a few different themes. First, there is the idea that the universe started out in some sort of chaos-based state before a god created the universe. This idea, for example, can be found thousands of years ago in the Middle East in ancient Babylon, where the Babylonians believed the universe started out as a watery chaos until the god Marduk killed the goddess Tiamat, splitting her in half, creating heaven and earth. And from here, Marduk would organize the universe and create people, and this origin story was known as Enuma Elish. Next, there's the idea of emergence, which is common among many creation stories. For example, the Native American Hopi tribe came up with a creation story that believed that the god Masa created the earth and originally people, and that originally people lived below the earth before they were allowed by the god to emerge from it. And then finally, there are the Abrahamic creation stories, which represent the origin stories of Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And in this creation story known to... Christians, for example, as Genesis, God, or Yahweh if you're Jewish, or Allah if you're Muslim, creates the universe and eventually people out of nothing. However, this story was influenced to a certain extent by the Babylonian creation story, as I mentioned earlier, and Numa Elish. After all, these stories would develop in the same region of the world in the Middle East. However, the Babylonian story is older having been written a little under 4,000 years ago, while Genesis was written a little under 3,000 years ago. Additionally, when it comes to things in common, they both feature a creator who would create the universe, and also they both have a great flood, for example, in their origin story. In turn, all these different creation stories highlight the desire by different civilizations to make sense of their world, often basing their stories off of earlier ones. And we still see this effect play out today. After all, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam all have various denominations within their religions where people who have different interpretations of religious texts may have a different view and then have a slightly different religious group under the umbrella of Christianity, for example. And the reason for this is just because, you know, these religious stories are very broad, so it's easy to take away different interpretations from them. And also, these are people who are trying to, you know, connect with a religious text that was written thousands of years ago. So they're often just trying to take bits and pieces from this text that they feel especially relates to them or how they think and focus on those while ignoring the other texts that they can't really relate to given that they're living in a modern world, you know, thousands of years after the fact that this was written. So the historical context of these texts often don't match up with the people of today. But generally speaking, these religious texts help people cope with the unknown by providing some sort of guidebook to a person's life, bringing them comfort. After all, it historically has been easier for people to assume they know they come from something by believing in a religious origin story and that there is some anthropomorphic God looking out for them rather than believing that there is nothing out there and they're just alone in the universe waiting to die. Um, I think most people, when given the choices, would prefer to have someone out there trying to take care of them. That's just kind of normal and human nature. 
because the idea of admitting that you have no idea is certainly harder to process when it comes to your own existence and witnessing the inevitable death of loved ones, for example. So overall, when it comes to the origins of the universe, we have had creation stories for thousands of years, which are pretty off base when it comes to accuracy, given the people that wrote these origin stories had very little knowledge of the world scientifically like we do today. However, even today, our knowledge of the universe is still pretty elementary because there is so much we don't know. And for many, it can be hard to accept that. So that's why I think it's important that though you know, many religious texts are pretty out of touch when it comes to what we know scientifically today, it's still important that people are sympathetic to those who do have religious beliefs, especially if their religious beliefs are not hurting anyone, nor do they try to legislate their beliefs into law in a society. Because all people are just trying to get through life, and life is hard for everyone. And at the end of the day, no one really knows the origins of our universe, nor do we know what happens when we die. The universe could have always existed, or it could have come from another universe, or it could have come from something else, or have been created by some sort of god. After all, we certainly cannot dis disprove any claim, given we don't know anything about what predates the Big Bang almost 14 billion years ago. And when it comes to death, we really have no idea what happens when you die. All we know is it appears that scientifically you just disappear. However, of course, the energy that makes up you never actually goes away, it just becomes this kind of unusable energy. Because energy is neither created nor destroyed within our universe. So scientifically, technically, in some form, you do still exist after your death, just not quite the same form as you were. However, when it comes to the idea of personified gods of various religions, we have a pretty good idea based on historical evidence that these gods do not exist, given that so much of the historical texts in general are not very reflective of, of any historical evidence that we are aware of when it comes to all these you know, stories of uh, miraculous things happening that seem to defy our scientific understanding of reality. And of course, we just have the general knowledge of the development of these stories and kind of the evolution of historical religious texts. So we can kind of see how they contradict each other or what they're basing certain ideas off of, as I mentioned earlier, when it comes to the Babylonian creation story and those creation stories of the Abrahamic religions. But perhaps the best case for a god in general, if you're thinking philosophically, would not be the personified version, but rather whatever led to our universe to begin with. Because by definition, whatever our universe came from would technically be the creator of it. So if you were to have a loose definition of God that doesn't try to define what God is in specific terms, nor tries to anthropomorphize it in any way, but rather just regards God as the precursor to our universe, this would certainly make much more sense than the historical origin stories of the past from various religious texts. After all, it would seem unlikely that our universe is special or came from nothing, so based on that, then you could make a decent argument to say, hey, you know, there is a God, depending on how you define it. So with this, the closest thing to an origin story beyond the scope of religious attempts throughout history comes from ones based on scientific evidence. For example, in 1980, the book Cosmos came out by Carl Sagan, which talked about what we know most likely be true based on our early universe, beginning with the Big Bang. And later, perhaps the best origin story that has been produced since then which includes the latest scientific and historical evidence that we have, and not only talks about our early universe, but also the development of our species over time from the origins of the universe to today, is the field of big history, which was developed by historian David Christian in the 1980s, where he would create a course sort of examining this history from the formation of our universe to the modern world. And later, the first big history book would be written by Dr. Fred Spear in 1996, another big historian. And essentially, the big history story just seeks to tell how things came from the beginning of the universe to development of our species to development of civilizations to the world we have today, and also trying to contemplate where our species goes from here. 
when it comes to things like the developments of technology. So regardless of what your mindset is, whether you're religious or you're not, all we can all do, given that we all share our common humanity, is keep learning more and more about the origins of our universe and our species to add more missing puzzle pieces to the story of us. Because we're all part of the story, and whether we are agnostic or atheist or religious or whatever else you want to define yourself as, these are questions that we will always contemplate as a species. And that act of contemplation, regardless of how different our interpretations of what must be true are, that act of contemplation represents how we are all united as humanity trying to understand this mysterious existence we find ourselves in. So with that, as always, remember, billions of years led to you. So make the most of it.